Hey everyone, this is Alex from warnoffkeys.com and welcome to episode one of my Minecraft plugin development series. In this video, we're going to be installing our IDE, which is just a fancy text editor to actually write our code and convert that into a Minecraft plugin. We're also going to be setting up a basic local server on your computer and then trying to run a very basic plugin. But before we get into that, it's really important that you already know the basics and the fundamentals of the Java programming language, because I won't be diving into any of the basic details in this series, but I do have a separate series, which will be linked in the description, that does teach most of the basics and fundamentals about Java. So in Google, we can type in IntelliJ download, and we can click on the top result. We then want to select the community and then click on download. Your download should automatically start. So now I've opened up the IntelliJ installer and most of the defaults here are fine. You can go through and customize any of these options, but this is a pretty standard installer where you click next a bunch of times and then you're good to go. So I'm gonna click on next, next again, and finally install. So once your install is done, you can go ahead and check this box and then click on finish. We need to agree to the terms here and then click on continue. You now see a page similar to this one. Go ahead and click on new project. I have some extra plugins in here, such as this Minecraft, so you may not see that, that's fine. We're just gonna keep it simple and select the Java project and then click on next, next again. And here we can set up where our project should live. So I've created a Minecraft series folder. Inside I have a server folder and I also have a project folder. This is where I want this IntelliJ project to be saved to. So I can select that and then click on finish. And it's going to go ahead and create the project for us. Next, we need the actual spigot jar to run our server and develop our plugins with. So we can go ahead and Google git bucket, but with two Ks. And this top result right here, we can then click on it. And we can then click on spigot 1.16.5. We can then click here again, and then we'll go ahead and click on keep. So I've now moved this jar file into my Minecraft series folder. And now our next step is to actually link this to our IntelliJ project. We can go to the top right here and click on this gear icon and then click on project structure. We wanna go under modules and then here we see all dependencies. We wanna click on the plus and you wanna add a jar or directories. This will open up and you wanna select your spigot jar and then click on okay. And when you can, go ahead and click on apply. We can now click okay. We'll go back to those settings in a moment, but let's go ahead and set up some basic code. So under the source directory, I'm going to make a new package. And this is going to basically be what your domain name would be for a website, for example, backwards. So mine is warnoffkeys.com. So I'm going to say com.warnoffkeys. And this is important because different plugins are going to have their own package names. And because domains have to be unique, this is a good way to make sure that all the packages are going to be unique as well. So we can go ahead and press enter. And this is basically just a folder. I'm going to right click, make a new Java class, and I'm going to call this my first plugin and then press enter. So here we have this Java class. I went ahead and zoomed in so you can see it better. And after this class name, we're wanting to extend using the extends keyword Java plugin. And here we see this autocomplete with org.bucket.plugin.java. This means that you correctly imported your spigot jar. We can go ahead and press enter. And now once this jar is compiled, your server will recognize this as an actual plugin. So when typically learning a new programming language, the first thing you're going to do is learn how to print the text hello world to the screen. And we're going to do something similar here for our first Minecraft plugin. So I can say at override, and we're going to override public void on enable, and it has to be spelled just like this. And this is a method that we ran whenever your plugin first enables. There's also another method called public void on disable, 
And this is what happens whenever your plugin is disabled or the server shuts down. So we are going to use system.out.println to print hello world here. And we can also use SOUT to automatically generate this for us. So we can say hello world. And then on disable, we can say shutting down or something else like that. It's up to you. Now, the last step we need before our plugin is testable is to go ahead and make a new file by right clicking, hovering over new, and then file. We could then say plugin.yml. And within here, there's a couple things we want to add. We notice that IntelliJ, at least my version because of the plugins, automatically knows that we're missing main, name, and version. Main is going to be our main class file. In this case, it is my first plugin.java. So we have to specify the full package name, which is my first plugin. We then need a name, which is going to be warnoffkeys tutorial, and then a version. We can just say version one. Real quick, I noticed a mistake later on in the video, so I'm editing this section in. The name here in your plugin YML must only be one word. It cannot have multiple words like I was originally showing. This is something I forgot about. So just simply remove the spaces. And optionally, you can have a simpler name such as this tutorial or anything you want. Just make sure it is one single word. So now we want to build this. But if we click on build, build artifacts is grayed out. And that's typically what we want. So in order to enable this, we can go back to this gear at the top right. We can go to project structure. You can then go to Artifacts and then click on this plus right up here. Hover over Jar and then select From Module with Dependencies. You want to go ahead and click OK. And then on this left column right here, I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's two columns right here. The left one is what your jar is going to contain. The right one is other resources that we can put into the jar as we compile. We don't actually want the extracted spigot jar within our plugin. So I'm going to right click and click on remove. That's because our spigot jar is already available because that's what we're running the plugin on. So now one more thing we have to do is click on this plus and click on file. And under our project, under source, we need to select our plugin YML. And then we can click on apply and OK. That's because the plugin YML is required. This name is what people see within the help menu. And this main path right here will tell our server where to start executing our code. So now we can click on build. We should see build artifacts. And we just want to click on enter or just click build. And we now see this out directory right here with our actual jar right there. So now we're going to go ahead and set up a 1.16.5 server on our computer. So I'm going to copy this jar. I'm going to go into server and I'm going to paste. And then I'm also going to right click and make a new text document. And I'm going to name this start.sh. I can then open this up. I could then say Java space dash XMX1G space dash XMS1G space dash jar server dot jar and then no GY one word. This is going to start up our local server with one gigabyte of RAM. You can go ahead and change these values. If you only want 500 megabytes, for example, you can go ahead and change it to this. I'm going to go ahead and move forward with one gigabyte. Dash jar is specifying that we're running this specific jar, which we do have to rename our jar to here in a second. And no GUI is going to prevent this default GUI from opening because we don't need to see it. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to close this. And now I'm going to click this twice slowly to be able to rename it to server.jar. Now we need a way to actually run this. My go-to console is called Commander. It's free and a link to the download will be found in the description. If you're familiar with other consoles or terminals, feel free to use those if you want. I like this one because it has an option of staying always on top by right-clicking the icon right here and then checking always on top. So I'm clicking here in Chrome and it's still open right here. I find that convenient. So if you like that, check out commander.net. So back to here, we see that I'm on my desktop. I'm going to copy this path 
and I'm going to use CD, also zoom in here. I'm going to use CD to navigate to this directory. I can use Control L to clear my console, and then LS to view all the files. Here we see that we're in the right directory. To run start.sh, I can say sh space start, and then I can also press tab to autocomplete that. I can then press enter, and it's going to try running our server. Now, whenever a server is starting up, you're likely going to get this 20 second delay, and also we're forced to agree to the Minecraft EULA, which means that the server is going to stop, and we're going to get a EULA.txt file that we have to edit, and then we can start our server up again. Here we see it's creating some files for us, and here we see that EULA.txt. So if I open this, we want to change EULA to true, save it, go ahead and close it, and then in your console, you can press up to go to the previously used command, and this is going to start the server up again. Once you see the word done, that means that your server is done starting up. I'm going to go back to our Windows Explorer. I can go back one directory, go into our project, which is our IntelliJ project, and I want to get to this jar right here, which is in the out directory, artifacts, project jar, and then I can click and copy this, and I can go back to our server folder and go into plugins, and I can paste this here. In future videos, we're going to look at an easier way to do this where whenever you restart, it'll automatically pull the latest compiled jar. But for now, we're just learning and testing things out. Now that this is here, I can go ahead and restart by typing in stop. And then I can press up to go ahead and run the server again. We now see hello world right here. And if I run PL, which is short for plugins, we now see the one plugin is worn off keys tutorial. And if you remember, we were console logging shutting down whenever it went to shut down. So if I press stop, we see shutting down right here. So that means our plugin is enabled and everything is good to go. If you want to see more tutorials like this one, consider subscribing. And if my videos have helped you out, please consider clicking on the join button below this video to become a channel member. Thanks for watching.